Hulu has released the final two episodes for its Mike miniseries, and I'm going to let you know if it sticks to landing right after the jump. Hello, everyone. Terrence here with Hollywood Already Did It. If you haven't already, go ahead, like, share, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, ring that bell below. Anytime we have something, you will be among the first to know. We are crossing the finish line here uh, with Mike, miniseries on Hulu. Um, <laughs> if you've been with me all the way throughout this, this has been sort of a mixed bag. Um, I did not care too much for the first two episodes. I thought I got a little bit more slowed down and focused in episodes three and four. And then episode five, I think, is the standout when it switches focus and, and, and focuses on Desiree. These final two episodes sort of put me back in the same way that I felt about the first two episodes in that there is a lot of information being thrown at us and made for us to digest in a quick 22 minute per episode format. Um, and it doesn't always take itself serious at moments when it should take itself serious and we're led to kind of move on and bleed into the next sequence. It's shot like a music video, whereas I think episodes three, four, and five all sort of let things breathe and kind of felt like dramas and actual stories and, and, and movies or films. These two last two episodes were shot like we were making a, a rapid fire music video and we got to cut from scene to scene to scene to scene to scene. There is still some good stuff here and there, but I think overall, both of these episodes kind of put me back in the way that I felt about the first two episodes of the series. First of the two, the penultimate episode is called Cannibal, and it very much deals with, obviously, hence the title, the ear biting incident. Something that they've sort of been sprinkling in all the time throughout, saying, hey, we'll get to that, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Well, second to last episode is the episode they decide to get to it. Um, what we learn is that once Tyson is released from prison, he's kind of trying to figure out what to do next. He, himself, doesn't know, but Don King very much has a mission for him, and it's to get him back out there and get him to fight and get him built back up so they can get a belt so they can start uh, getting on some of those bigger purses. These last few episodes also frame relationships that he is in at different points of, uh, of, of his career. In this one, he meets Monica Turner, which is somebody he met before he went into prison, somebody he met um, younger. He sort of stuck around, they kept in contact, but he, he didn't full on date her. Once he comes out of prison, um, she's more around, and she informs him and lets him know that, hey, you should take your time. Figure out what you want to do next. You don't have to get back in the ring immediately. This isn't something you need to do. And I do, and she's like, I don't trust Don. Don King is somebody you should not, you should not trust. Um, and <laughs> she's like, he's stealing money. He's got money from you. Mike confronts Don and says, hey, where's my money? You got money? Very much that, let me know what's going on, where's my money, tell me what's going on. And Don is always a, a slightly a step ahead of him. Um, it sucks in that Don is that shyster, that deplorable man that, yeah, he can see that this bulldog, this pit bull is raging at the foaming at the mouth, coming after him. But if I give him this treat over here, I think I can deter him enough to focus his anger elsewhere instead of on me. And in that, he does... And he gives them two briefcases full of money, uh, millions of dollars. And that is all that is needed to satiate the desires of somebody who wants to know where their money is. <laughs> um, just came from prison and has no money and this sort of gets him back on the track. The problem with that is that Mike at this point didn't think about it, nor did he pretty, probably discuss any of this. But he did that. And knowing, we all know that, yeah, he gave you two. What does he actually have? He's not giving you everything he has. So if he's giving you two, that means he's got like 40 <laughs> that he's got. It's unfortunate to sort of see Mike still getting kind of poo-pooed and shooed away, but that is what's happening in Cannibal. And then we just sort of see him getting these, these fights and these fights. But as he's doing this, he's losing himself. He doesn't know who he is. He knows that the world does not give a rat's ass about him outside of when he is has a title not even when he's fighting and winning he's like yeah you guys are starting to see me but you don't care about me until i have this title he feels again that he's defined by that belt and that the only way that people will love him or care about him is if he has that belt around his waist something that he repeats throughout this entire series like do you love me he's always asking for someone to if they love him from his mother to um 
to Robin, to the the, the Desiree, someone who he rapes. Even in the moment, even in that moment of a heinous act, he seems to always come along to "Do you love me?" That's what he's always searching for. He doesn't feel like the people love him, and so he starts turning to drugs. Then it gets worse and worse, and it just becomes this downward spiral where he's getting coked up in between matches, getting coked up around matches, drinking, doing everything humanly possible. He's got a woman who does love him, who uh, bears him children, but he is having night terrors, waking up in the middle of the night. He is be losing the focus and being at things that he said he was going to be at, like at birthday parties or all this stuff. He is now completely a shell of who he, who he used to be. And so this fight with Holyfield comes along. And this has always sort of been the, 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 the thing that has circled around this fight. That Tyson and Tyson supporters and and and, and uh, defenders <laughs> like to say that Holyfield was dirty and Holyfield would, would headbutt, and so we see it in this the first fight, which he even mentions that a lot of people don't know that there were two Holyfield fights; they only know the one of the the ear biting, which is the second of the two. Um, the first fight, Tyson go, is going in as the favorite, and he has a title. Um, it is shot in a way and done in a way, and this may be the case, is that Tyson doesn't remember that fight at all. After around the first first round, around the second round, he gets head headbutt and then he just goes dark. He he doesn't remember too much. He doesn't remember really the rest of the fight. And he's told after the fight that he lost his belt. So he doesn't not only and he's pissed. So not only does he not remember the fight and he feels like he was cheated out of it, um, remember the whole he feels that the only way that people respect him or love him or show him any affection or any attention is if he has the belt. And now he doesn't. So he gets, he's already coking out. It gets even worse and starts coking out even more. Um, and it just becomes this just vicious and downward spiral that he just can't, can't get out of. But the one thing that is his constant for him is his wife, Monica. Um, and there's a moment in all of this where... Uh, he already has one kid from when Monica becomes pregnant again, and in that, she tells him, and in that, he's like, I want to make an honest woman of you. Now, it doesn't seem like he's doing this because he actually loves her. He asks her, do you love me? She's like, yes, but he doesn't feel it. All she asks of him is to be faithful. She doesn't use those words. I forgot which words she used. Um, but to be faithful to her and to the family. Like, that's all she asks, and Tyson's like, cool, I can do that. We get in the overview of the overlay of the voice that he's doing in the stand-up part. Is that you know he's he's that he's just saying that for the moment. But they do get married. Um, at that wedding, he, uh, Don King pitches is like, "Hey, I already got the I closed the deal. I got Holyfield two on the books." Now, mind you, Holyfield two is coming literally two months after the fact of that other Holyfield. And in that, he's done no training. He's done more coke than you can think of because he's in a depressed stupor about losing that belt. He is not trained. He is not prepared. He is in no way ready for a, a, a repeat title fight. But Don, being that devilish man, that silver tongue fox that he is, puts in his head like, hey, you're getting older. This might be your last chance. You've never gotten the chance to get a rematch versus the person who may have beaten you or who took your title. Buster Douglas, he wound up being a flash in the pan. It was a joke. It was a fluke. And then he, he lost it. But this guy, this guy is the one. And this the purse. You're not going to get a $30 million purse. And he throws the money in front of him. And then he hits him with the, but what are you without your title? If you don't go back and get this title, who are you? Who are you to yourself? Who are you to me? You're nothing. That's dirty. And so Tyson gets back into that, that ring with Holyfield. And, um, well, we know what happens. There are headbutts. You can even see it on the tape. There are headbutts that happen. I don't know if it's enough to justify. It's not enough to justify what Tyson's done. But Tyson bites one ear uh, and then comes back and bites the other pretty much clean off. In that, he loses his belt. He loses his license for months. At the... Now, the biggest thing that I sort of take away from the, at that fight is that the first thing he thinks of is like, my kids, I don't want my kids to be frightened of me. But then we see a sequence where he and Monica kind of have a meeting and she's like, I just want to know why you did. And he's like, ah, I don't know why. And he tries to sort of explain it. In that, she's saying that I'm still here. I still love you. And he, in the overlay, says like, she did love me, but I don't think I thought that I deserved the love that she was giving. Um... And so this is the first time where 
we see that he's always looking for love and she's giving it to him, but she doesn't think that he's worthy enough, whether it's because he's, um, he's drugged out, because he is now no longer the champ, no, he no longer has a purpose. Anything that's happening in his life, he no longer now feels that he deserves Monica and he subsequently Fs that up. Although we don't really get clear as to why, but she asks to be com for him to be commit committed to her and we learn that in the next episode for Phoenix that he wasn't and that's what sort of ends that. This episode ends by doing a time jump, and this is where this episode just gets weird. You know, I think these last two episodes just don't work a lot for me. Is that there's time jumps and, and loops and goes back and forth all the time. But we see a shot of him getting the famous face tattoo in 2003, which is years after the Holyfield fight. Um, but he says he does it because he got so tired of seeing Mike Tyson. He was done. He was fucked, tired, fed up with Tyson. And so... When he looked in the mirror, he no longer saw Mike Tyson if he put the tattoo on his face. And that's where it ends. I felt like the episode would have been stronger had it just ended with he and Monica in the bed and then put this in at the top of the next episode. But whatever. The next episode is called Phoenix. And the reason it's called that is because sort of like people go through a lot of torment and, and pain and anguish and then rise like a phoenix out of the ashes. That's what the metaphor is for. That's why the title is there. And this uh, episode shows that he is still down in the dumps. Crack, uh, crack, cocaine, 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 cocaine. That's his drug of choice, and he's in it. He's in it while he's fighting. He's in it. He's taking fights that he does. He should, has no business being in the ring with. Don King is still trying to set him up on major fights. He gets a thing with Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis knocks him the hell out. It just, it's just a downward spiral for him. But, like with the last episode, he does find someone here in Kiki, Lakia, um, who is another person that he met originally when she was 18 through the, through the uh, Islamic belief faith. Some, one of the elders brought her to him, um, but there was nothing that sort of happened. But then they started having romantic moments in between times of like 96, 97. Put the time together in between when he was actually with Monica. So some of that commitment stuff, I'm sure Monica saw the writing on the wall and this is, she's the reason why. Um, and they form this stronger bond because Don's taking everything. He is, Tyson's broke, bankrupt. He's talking about filing for bankruptcy and she's sort of there with him throughout all of this. Um, and he tries to confront Don King, but Don King's got muscle men now outside of his office and Mike now has to, now that he's no longer the prize fighter, he doesn't get the, the top viewing or top work with Don that he used to and uh but in all of this he starts to form a, a serious bond with Kia uh Kiki is also somebody who has warts her parents and the nation the people her parents her mom had these shell companies that people in Washington the white folks in Washington always get away with they've gotten in trouble because they've, they've been caught so she has to go to jail um and for some reason that turns Tyson on. So you gotta go to jail. And they have this little moment. Who knows if this actually happened, but they have this moment where they kind of connect or they relate. They um he is no better than she, and she is no better than him. They are now on this equal playing field. He also is very much into Kiki because she has been by his side and actually has interest in him while he is bankrupt, while he has nothing. Um and he feels like all the people that he sort of has had around before in some way or another. Are, were there because of the money. I don't necessarily, nothing showed me that for Monica, but I think that's how he tricked his brain to believe for her. Like, he was still of something when, when she came to be. She has to go to prison, but before they do have sex, she becomes pregnant um, and gives birth to their, their first child in, uh, in prison. And in all of that, this, the reason why all of this seems like it's rushing along so fast because as it is, like it's just nuts. This last episode could have easily been two more episodes to kind of let stuff breathe. We don't really get a resolution with how he ends things with Don, other than him, we see a sequence where he and a friend pull over in a car and he's choking him out and then it just ends. Like it, it, nothing, while that may not be the focus of this, it just feels so quick and so rushed that it's like, uh, whoa, my head is spinning with all the things that all the balls are still being juggled. Mike has more than four kids, but according to how this is, other than a, a throwaway line that Kiki gives us at the end when she's sort of reforming Mike, 
we don't know that there are other kids besides the two that we see on screen. Um, we do know that in all of this, he, he does decide to, um, to retire. He, he takes a couple of more fights and he's just not remembering them. He's looking out of shape. He's, he's taking losses. He takes a loss and he's just like, I, 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 I'm done. Like, I, I no longer have the fight to fight. I'm doing it now just to bring in money. Um, and that's never good. Not for somebody of who his caliber is. Like, he's ruining his legacy. Um, but between that and then his daughter with Kiki um, accidentally passes away after being strangled through a treadmill accident. Um four a four-year-old he just is out of it he's done down for the count downward spiral coking up again um he doesn't feel loved he doesn't and he feels like the one sort of bright spot to his life has sort of been taken away from him mind you just as a caveat that daughter was born on the same day as his mother so between that he was starting to get therapy before his daughter passed but and it's starting to kind of work but then that happened to, to derail him a little bit but what we get is that Kiki is still not leaving his side. No matter what, she's going to be there. She's going to see him through it. She just has a heart-to-heart a -heart with him and says, that stuff there is what's messing you up. And he asks one more time, the question that he's asked over and over and over again throughout this entire series, do you love me? And she's like, yes. Uh, and then from that point on, he ha he hands the lines of coke that he has on the side of his bed to Kiki. He says, "Go flush that," and he's never he's never done uh, coke again. He's weed. He's under. He's in the weed and, and edibles now. Um, but that is the time when he ends that, and he starts going vegan. We know how his life has sort of turned since that point, but we don't get any of that in the show. Sort of ends there. And it just shows, starts doing these quick clips of all the things that kind of made him up as we've gone along. How he is, he is both the good guy and the bad guy in this story. He has been the, the hero and the villain. He is the red state and the blue state. He is America, where there are warts and there are great things that sort of occur to make him who he is, to make him Mike. And that is what all sort of this comes together entails. It's um, a quick button to a story. To a to a man to a, a a show that I think could have been handled a lot. I whether this had been a miniseries where each of these episodes was thirty to forty minutes, and we got to kind of sit in some of the pain and sit and sit some of the 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 anguish that we have a little bit more than normal. Um, there's a sequence in this one where I was just like, oh, you just took the piss out of that entire scene where he's saying just. He's on a Cokeville binge at a press conference and just saying some of the most explicit and downright, like, I'll eat your kids. I hope somebody annually rate, I'll eat your ass. Like, all types of just random stuff to folks. And then he just does the, I mean, that's what happens in real time. And then we see him on stage doing the Kanye shrug, sort of a joke to throw it away. And it's just like, ah, you're losing it. Like, we just saw you losing it. But then you took the piss out of it by saying, hey, well, you know, I do crazy shit sometimes. <laughs> just didn't feel right um and that happened a lot between the first two episodes and these last two episodes i think the middle part is when it sort of found its footing and then it kind of just lost it again for me I'll, this series as a whole was very herky-jerky um and i think if anything i would just pull out episode five and just show that to everybody the desiree washington episode just show that to everybody and the rest you can kind of but you can take it or leave it i think in the, the hands that this was done in is, are very capable. We can tell that they cared and they, they gave some some sound pieces here and there to things. But I think some of the messaging got lost because we're going through it so quickly. Like the big thing here is that the therapist comes and tells Mike and in, in the very end here that like you had two fathers, but they kind of did you a bit of a disservice. Your one father left you and your other made you to be a monster. And she's like, he was like, no, that was only in the ring. And, and her point was, did he clarify that to you? Did he make that known to you? You were a fourteen-year-old kid, and it seems like that monster went with you all walks of life, as opposed to just being in the ring. Um, that is a good thesis point for, for this for this series, and it doesn't seem like that was the overall thesis point um, to the very end. We didn't really have a. This is the story that I'm trying to tell. This was more of like let's go through the greatest hits of Mike's life, and we'll figure out what the actual moral or point is at the very end 
And so as great as that button is at the end, like I am America, I am all of this, it doesn't feel earned from everything else that we got, we got uh, in the rest of the series. But those are my thoughts on Mike's The Mini Series for Hulu. What did you guys think about it? Go ahead and leave your thoughts and comments in the comments below. If you haven't already, you can follow us on Twitter at HollywoodADI, or you can hit us up on email at HollywoodAlreadyDidIt at gmail.com. We also have a podcast with the same name. That's on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere that plays podcasts. We're there. And like always, I got my ticket. You got yours. Thank you.